Please welcome Pinky. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going we're gonna to have a fun conversation, I can assure you of that. Um, thrilled, to, thrilled to welcome you here. Before we get into some questions, like you know, detailed questions, tell us a little bit about your, your journey and, and how you got to be one of the top up-and-coming restaurateurs on the planet. Oh, well, thank you. I like that. How many people have ever heard of Slutty Vegan? Okay, cool we're that? doing something right. How many vegans in here are slutty, no? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started this wild and crazy company in 2018 called Slutty Vegan. No blueprint, no business plan, but really um, an idea that I wanted to solve a personal problem. And that problem was I wanted vegan comfort food on a late night, and I was tired of eating Chick-fil-A fries and a side salad. Point blank simple. And <laughs> I had no idea that this bedroom concept will turn into one of the hottest concepts in the country, where four years later, I still got lines down the block. I'm on covers of magazines. I'm opening locations. I'm just about to open up my nice location. I have cookbooks that's coming out next week. Thank you. Um, and what we're doing is helping people to reimagine food in a way that they never thought possible, but doing it in the funnest way by giving people a crazy ass experience and they fall in love with it every single time. And that's why people are talking about Slutty Vegan. That is amazing. I mean, congratulations. Thank you. And I know it's just the beginning, honestly. Thank you. That's breathtaking. Honestly, how did you have the audacity to go from that late night, like, I don't want Chick-fil-A fries, to I'm going to build a, you've got nine locations right now. You've now expanded, I believe, into Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, like, what gave, what gave you the, the confidence that mm. you, could, you could actually do that? Failure. <laughs> how many people have ever had a business before, even prior to the one you have, that didn't work out how you wanted it to work out? or something that you did did not work out. Definitely. That happened to me. I had a restaurant in Harlem, New York, and I had a grease fire, and I literally lost everything. It wasn't salvageable, and because I didn't get fire insurance, I couldn't keep anything. So I had to walk away from that experience, but while at the time I thought that it was failure, it wasn't failure at all. It was really an opportunity for me to get my comeback. And when I did it again, I knew what to do differently, right? I knew how to make sure that I had the proper insurance. I knew to make sure that I paid my sales and used taxes. Okay, let's talk about that. I knew how to make sure that like I had an attorney and I had um, an accountant. So when I did Slutty Vegan, when you talk about that level of confidence, I've already been through the fire. Yes. I already, I already, I felt the smoke already. Forged. I love it. Right. So when you think about growing this new concept, I'm like, okay, I'm an expert, right? This was the most expensive school that I ever went to, but guess what? I got my degree in entrepreneurship because I know what it looks like to have hiccups and speed bumps. And because of those speed bumps, it just made me smarter. It made me swifter. And then all the opportunities in Slutty Vegan, I'm like, oh, I've been here before. I love that. This happened to me before, and here we are. I love that. I mean, talk about a growth mindset. A lot of people take failures like that, and they, they get defeated. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you were able to learn from it and turn it into your next chapter. Absolutely. I love it. Um, okay, you're low energy, very clearly low energy. <laughs> uh, you have four children, I believe. You have nine restaurants. You opened this Slutty Vegan in 2018. Mm -hmm. How do you, like, t tell me how you balance your life. Like, how do, you, how do you have the energy to take care of yourself, to do this for the long haul, and to balance the needs of your family and, and, and what you're doing at work? Well, I drink coffee every day. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, balance. People always ask about balance. And what I've learned about the things that I do is when I love to do what I'm doing, it never feels like work, right? So is it very difficult sometimes? Absolutely. But this is my dream. And I know almost everybody in here are entrepreneurs. You are literally living out your dream. But for me, 
my wildest dreams have come true. Yep. I've literally broken generational curses in my family. I've literally created enough money for my family to be able to be good for the rest of their lives. I've set them up that way. So when you think about like, oh, when I grow up, I want to, the thing that I said that I wanted to do when I grow up, I'm doing it. I checked it off the list. Done. So when you talk about balance, I have a village and my village helps me to be the business owner, the entrepreneur and the CEO that, I'm, that I am every day so that I can wake up and do things like this so that I can travel and open up restaurants because there are people in my life that believe in me enough to be on this journey of sacrifice with me so that I could be able to scale my company, which is why it is very important to make sure that you have people around you personally, that you trust, honor, and respect, and vice versa, so that you can live out your wildest dreams, right? And if you don't have that in your life, you got to make some changes. Yep. And I've had to have hard conversations with myself as well. The only reason why I'm able to be the CEO that I am today is because of the people around me. They are assets in my life. They add to me. They don't devalue me. They don't deplete my energy. And in any moment where I feel like they're depleting my energy, guess what happened? They got to go. <laughs> so I am on this journey of being able to balance all the things that I'm doing because I have a really good support system Smart. and a really good village. I love it. I love it. Very, in, in, and I think the, the concept of, of your energy, knowing what feeds you, each individual, I think that's a great tactic to, to being around for a long, long time. Thanks. Culture, we talked a little bit about it before we came up here. So you, I'm imagining when you founded the first restaurant, you were there. Mm -hmm. You were in the building, in the house, mm -hmm. deciding what it meant to run that restaurant, to be an employee at that restaurant. Now you got nine across multiple geographies, and how do you how do you maintain? If I walk into that next restaurant there, hopefully you're going to open on the West Coast soon. <laughs> how do I how do I get that experience that is you, Pinky? It is very difficult. How many people in here have more than one location? So scaling culture is the hardest thing that I've ever had to do in my life. When I talk about culture, I mean the experience that happens when people walk into the restaurant. And Slutty Vegan is a very unique experience. When you walk into the doors of Slutty Vegan, we call you a slut. <laughs> we laugh with you, joke with you. The music is booming through the speakers. The employees are dancing. It's high energy like me all of the time. Yep. And that is a part of the reason why people come right? People eat with their eyes yes. first. So when they walk through the door, they get this experience that is unmatched, that feels like an amusement park. It feels like King's Dominion. It feels like Adventure World Six Flags. So when they go in there, even if you're having a bad day, yeah. Slutty Vegan brightens that day. So how do you duplicate that from the Atlanta location to the Birmingham location to the Brooklyn location? Yeah. It's incentivizing employees. Yeah. Right. When I first started Slutty Vegan, I was just working people, working people, working people. This is the standard. This is how it goes. But I realized there is no possible way that you can build culture and build team without incentivizing the people around you. So guess what I started doing? I raised the minimum wage. I provided life insurance for all of my employees if they make 40 hours every single week, even if they aren't on the management side. I made sure that when we have big events, I give them money. I give them opportunities. We go out to the movies. We have kickball games. We do all of those things. On my social media, every single person that you see on my social media, they are employees. So if they have hidden talents, if they sing, if they dance, if they have things that they do on their own, now we get to showcase it on the page. That is building culture. So when they come to work, it doesn't feel like a job. It feels like they're building an empire with me. They're not working for me. They are working with me. Is it a, a work in progress? Absolutely. But I feel like we have gotten to a place where you show up for us and we show up for you. And as long as we show up for them, they'll continue to show up for the customers that walk through the door. Yeah. I like that. I like the, I like the idea of it not being, it's, it, it, I, I'm assuming, I'm, I'm betting that they believe they're, they're, they're doing something different too. Like it's oh, a, they are. Right? They yes. feel it. And I think, I think that's important, right? You need a mission beyond just, hey, we're serving food today. And I think that, that's uh, electrifying. Which Thank is you. And I want to add in here too, for all of the business owners, it is not enough 
to just sell products. A part of the success of Slutty Vegan is because we have a foundational philanthropic element to the brand, right? So while we're selling burgers, pies, and fries over here, we are creating an ecosystem where we're building the community at the same damn time, right? So yes, we make a lot of money selling food, but we also funnel some of that money into the foundational element and provide shoots uh, shoes, shirts, and clothes, provide lights for families, second chance opportunities for ex-offenders. We pay the rents for local businesses. I can go on and on and on, but that level of ethos will make people want to work for you and be a part of that cultural element that this is something that is a we instead of an I. And that's how we're building the culture. And it feels good to know that kids are going to be reading about this. This is not just one of those things that's just trendy. Like, this story is going to be in history books, how we have been able to create our own blueprint, do it on our own terms, redefine the word slutty, and make it a less provocative word and uh, more of a word of endearment and empowerment. I can say, what up, slut? And that means, like, hey, friend, I just called the president of DoorDash a slut. But, but that means, hey, friend, that is fantastic. I respect you. I love you, I value you, I admire you and what you do in this business. Like, we redefine that. So it. that is also a part of building culture. You, I love it. You're, so you are, you know, you were already touching on this, but I, you're clearly, you, you clearly understand marketing at a, an incredibly fundamental level, social media as well. T tell me the role that marketing has played in your success to date and how you think about marketing. And obviously, part of what you were just talking about, connecting with the community, being relevant locally, obviously has got to be a foundation and cornerstone to that. But, but I know you're one of the, 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 the best in the world at this, and I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you to talk about your, your view, I mean, of how you go to market and how you become relevant to the customer. That's a very great question. So on our social media, we do three very important things. We make people laugh, we make people proud, and we give them information. Right? And I have been following this formula for the last four years. What do I mean when I say that? Make them laugh. Everybody loves a good skit. It's already enough going on in the world. People just want to feel good. Like, give them something to laugh about. Making them proud, showing all of our accomplishments. I was just on the cover of Inc. Magazine for the October issue, Congrats. right? Which is a big accomplishment. It's huge. Making, thank you making people smile, making them proud and making them smile, right? All of the big things that we're doing, opening up locations and then giving them information. What are hap what's happening at the specific restaurants? Do we got a celebrity coming? What's on the menu today? We followed this strategic plan every single day for the last four years. And something else that is important, we post at the same time every single day. What I learned about people is that they love routine. They're used to it. Most of us wake up and go to a nine to five. That is a routine. So why would you take people out of that routine if that's what they are accustomed to? So we give people a routine so that they can identify. I know that subconsciously Slutty Vegan is going to post at 10 o'clock every day. They're going to post the menu. We've done that for the last four years. And the level of organic marketing that we've been able to produce has led people to the restaurants. It's raw. It's organic. It's not overly produced. Sometimes people feel like, like you got to have videographers all over the place to like put this whole produced picture together, and you ain't got to do that. What we realized is the things that are just raw and just camera phone post get more traction versus the highly produced Glossy, videos. Glossy, high. Yes, yeah. people don't need that. So marketing is the key to drive traffic to our business. Slutty Vegan is not a restaurant. Slutty Vegan is a marketing company that so happens to have burgers, pies, and fries. And when we build that model, you'll realize that it's a lifestyle brand, and we can educate people about all the great things that we have going on, and then it's a vibe. And then the last thing I'll say here, too, is if you watch Slutty Vegan's page, we do not sell veganism. When you think about veganism, it's like, oh, it's green, I don't want it, like, it might not taste good, right? We don't do that because we meet people where they are. And most of the people who come to Slutty Vegan are meat eaters, so we don't want to sell them something that they aren't interested in. To, in, interested in. We want to make them familiar with something that they're already used to, and that's the all-American burger. And that plan has worked since the very beginning. I love it. Can I, can I try your product? I haven't tried you. I can't wait. Are you coming to... You're trying it you, right now. <laughs> I am definitely I, trying I am it. The walking slutty you vegan. You are the product. <laughs> <laughs> 
What well, you get well here is said. what you will get in the restaurant, and that's the experience. Okay, heads up. We're, we're, I'm going to turn it over to the audience shortly for you all to ask questions. So be thinking about if you've got questions. To, I can definitely keep going. Uh, I'm going to shift gears a little bit, and then I'm going to turn it over to the audience to ask questions. So... Um, Restaurant advisor of DoorDash, we are so thrilled and lucky to have you as our as our restaurant advisor. Thank you. Why did you Why did you say yes? So I'm very intentional about everything that I do. So I want to tell y'all a funny story. I used to drive for DoorDash. How ironic is that? That's a full <laughs> circle moment, right? Um, I used to drive for DoorDash. I was a television producer at the time, and we went through a hiatus. So hiatus, obviously, you know, you don't work for like about four months. So not only did I need to get money to be able to sustain myself, I just like meeting new people, and I like to run my mouth, as you can see. Um, so I started doing DoorDash, and while I was doing it, I found a ghost kitchen in L.A. It was downtown. That was the first time I ever seen something like that. And they had like five restaurants in this one space. So I was like going to the same spot ten times, picking up food from different restaurants, which is the real reason why I came up with the ghost concept with Slutty Vegan. So thank you. <laughs> I did not know that. Yes. I did not know that. Yes. Wow. Um, so a full circle moment, years pass, and the opportunity presents itself I'm a storyteller. And I'm like, this is the universe telling me, like, the reason why I got this opportunity was because I was prepping myself for it years ago, right? I was prepping myself to be in position where I can give my ideas and my expertise to help the business make better sound decisions on how the merchant shows up in the marketplace. So when they ask me, I'm like, hell yeah, I'll take it, right? And I'm so happy that I did because what you guys get out of me is you get a raw, unfiltered version of a professional. So I am not coming in stuffy with a suit and tie. That ain't me, right? But what I am coming in is with real authentic opinions based on how I show up in the professional restaurant world that I think can add value to what you guys go, got going on. And what you guys can do for me, obviously, it's a fantastic resume builder. I get to build relationships with amazing people like you yep. and all of my other colleagues at DoorDash. And then I also learn how to be able to scale a company. Yes. You guys are where I admire to be. So one day I will get to that level and I get to use the relationships and the things that you guys talk about for me to apply them to my own business. So I am excited and thank you. Well, thank you. I, I can guarantee you we're going to get more out of the partnership uh, than, 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 uh, than, than maybe we'll give to you because you are providing a fresh perspective, a voice, um, unfiltered, unvarnished, which I, I'm very appreciative of. What's been the, what have you learned about DoorDash so far? What, like other than the, <laughs> there was a session last week that uh, one, of, one, of, one of my folks did with it. Just, she said, we used, we used two big words. So they uh, asked me, so <laughs> yeah, y'all were very professional, um, <laughs> which I like, right? Because structure is always important. What I love about DoorDash is that you guys are problem solvers. And because I'm an energy person, I realize that the people who are a part of the organization really care about solving problems. Yep. And in order to become a successful business and continue to be a successful business, you got to know how to like, identify problems and find solutions. Yep inside of those problems. And you guys do that very well. And that is something that I am in real time Interesting. applying it to the Slutty Vegan model. I often tell people that one of the reasons I think, you know, we've had some level of success at DoorDash is because the, one of the ways we take customer empathy is we take a problem and we think of it as like an opportunity and we're going to solve that problem. We often initially throw people at that problem, and then we try to figure out how to scale it. Uh, and, and that has served us very well. Like one of the reasons, one of the stats about DoorDash that blows my mind is we deliver to 95% of Americans now. Mm. So when it started, we were in 16 markets. We weren't even in Seattle, right? And why are we there? Frankly, David Gordon at the Cheesecake Factory used to beat me up all the time. <laughs> uh, every meeting, cover my stores, cover my stores, cover my stores, cover my stores. Well, that, that's a problem, right? We didn't know how to do it. 
-hmm. We just leaned into it. And so I'm, I'm really excited you picked up on that about the DoorDash culture because I think it's one of the, it's one of the cornerstones of, of, of what got us here. Every single time. Well, what, it, what happens if we do it like this? Everything is like, a, what happens, what happens, what happens? And they keep bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. And that is telltelling to why this is a successful organization because you hire the right talent who are committed to being problem solvers. Love it. All right. I'm going to turn it over. Any, anyone got any questions out there? We got folks with mics that will come and let you ask the question. Hi. We got one, there's one in the back, one down here. Are you in LA? So it's interesting because after this, I'm going to look at a location in Inglewood. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so make sure when I open, y'all show up, okay? <laughs> San Francisco's a nice city too. <laughs> I like that. Sorry, I live in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> Question back there? Hi, Ms. Pinky. Hi. One of my questions is with all that you've accomplished, nine locations, uh, scaling, building from four years ago, what is the best trouble you've encountered through those four years? The best trouble, <laughs> <laughs> the best trouble was saying no to people trying to put millions in my pocket to become my investors. That was the best trouble. Once upon a time, I couldn't even get people to even look my way. Yep. And now I have the ability to confidently say no to people who want to give me money because it's a good problem because there are so many people that are lined up that want to be a part of the empire that I'm building. So I would say that's probably like the good trouble that, that I've been in. That is a great and problem. And I pray that it stays that, that way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Always have enough cash. I've, I've, you, nothing, nothing teaches you about cash flow more than doing a startup. I did a startup once and you kind of get it after a while. Yes, so you do. congratulations on being at that point now. Thank you. My vision is for Slutty Vegan to be a super brand. So you see Slutty Vegan is the starting point, right? Then you start building the tentacles. That's movies. That's educational elements um, and um, things that we put in school, right? Curriculums in school. I believe that what I'm building is bigger than just food. Yep. I'm building something that everybody can be a part of that will give them the safe space to be the best versions of themselves. And whatever that looks like, I wanna be a part of it. So I'll give you an example. Like I have tapped into so many industries already and have mastered them. For example, uh, the Steve Madden collaboration where we sold out in a week. I did a collaboration with a super big um, lipstick company called The Lip Brand. We sold out in a week, right? And tapping into other great brands to be able to elevate my brand and empower people along the way. I am literally a girl from around the way from East Baltimore, born into humble beginnings to Jamaican parents. I am literally the dream of every woman, every young woman, every black woman, every minority. I literally can speak to every dreamer. So I speak to everybody in the room, right? So I wanna continue to speak to people in the room with all the things that I do under that slutty vegan umbrella. And obviously that comes with opening up locations, but it does not stop there. Wow. Unbelievable. So my question is, since you know the magic of a traditional brick and mortar as well as the ghost kitchen model, which is where my people are at, how, what advice would you give for us working out or starting out of ghost kitchens who want to create the experience, but yet we don't get to see our guests. There's no, or very limited interaction, frequently no interaction how do we recreate an experience like walking into a slutty vegan restaurant um, as opposed to walking into a space, you know, putting in your number, getting your food and going away? How do we recreate what we see for our brand using the ghost model? So that's a great question because I started in the ghost model and my unfiltered advice is to stay there. Because now I am moving back into the space like I need to tap back into this ghost market. Right. Because with everything that's happening, happening with the market, the economy, um, prices are going up, the recession, everything that's happening, the safe space here 
is to tap back into the ghost model. So where you are, you are in a great space. My advice to you is tap into major markets. What I realized is I reignited the flame to my business when I opened up in New York. You know why? Because New York is a melting pot. You got black people, white people, Asians, Africans, people from Canada, people from everywhere. Right. And New York is kind of like a pass through space. Right. So you are getting people from all walks of life coming to your space. And guess what happens when they go home? They go and talk about your brand to their countries, to their states, wherever they are. So my advice to you is keep your ghost model. Right. And expand that way and then open up in major cities. Do the L.A.'s, do the New York's, do the Chicago's, do the Miami's. DC and sit back and collect and be happy and create the experience in those markets and then all the other markets you do your ghost concept. That's what I'm about to do anyway. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Long range marketing strategy. Sounds like you're like. Yes. Hi, Pinky. Um, Hi. I'm, my name is Vice Cole. I'm with Mama Masubi here today. Uh, I just wanted to know uh, what brought you to Los Angeles uh, for you to be over here from the East Coast to the West Coast to drive for DoorDash and when was that? When I came to LA initially? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I was a casting director for a TV show called Iyanla Fix My Life on the own network, um, which was the biggest blessing that could have ever happened to me because after I had the grease fire at my restaurant, I needed therapy. <laughs> and the TV show is a therapy-based show. So while I was booking people to get therapy, I was getting the therapy that I needed. And then while I was in LA, they asked me to go to Atlanta to work on the ground on the show. And that's when I came up with Slutty Vegan. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, back to back to LA. Um, so I'm back here because I still got my storage from four years ago. I'm ashamed <laughs> and embarrassed to say that. Okay, because I never took it out. Of That's how busy the business has been. Um, but I'm coming back because, just like I said before, LA is a great market for veganism. Right? There are a lot of great restaurants yeah. in LA um, that are vegan, but they ain't got a slutty vegan. And I know I've I've come here twice to do two pop ups. One. Um, was downtown LA a couple of years ago and literally we had over a thousand people there. And then we did a festival in Pasadena and had probably like 1200 people. So I know that there is a market for my brand okay. and because there are a lot of vegans in LA um, and non-vegans who would like the brand, I will definitely be back. And shameless plug, I am um, going on tour. My book tour, it's really? called Eat Plants Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'm so serious. Um, but my, 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 my book is coming out on the 14th, um, so you can pre-order now. But I'm coming back to L.A. on the 21st to talk about my book, to talk about all the great things that I'm doing. And it's an interactive experience. And you can get tickets, Ticketmaster.com. You found time to write a book in all this? this yes. Is crazy. It's a cookbook. Yes. <laughs> Please join me in thanking Pinky. You are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you.